Hi guys, hope you're fine and doing well. So today we will be discussing this problem from the lead code, which is where will the ball fall? So this is the 20th problem of the dynamic programming series. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, you can consider watching them since it will be really helpful for you to understand the concepts in the upcoming videos. And in case you are new to this channel, you can consider subscribing it and pressing the bell icon so that you don't miss any of the upcoming updates. So let's get started with this problem. So the question states that we are given a 2D grid of size m cross n, which represents a box. And we have n balls with us and the box is open from top and bottom. The other thing that we are given is that each cell in this box has a diagonal board spanning two corners of the cell that can direct the ball to either right or left. We'll see. In the upcoming example what does this mean to say and then what we are required to do is we need to drop one ball at the bottom of each column in the box and that ball will travel from top to the bottom via some route and then we have to return an array answer which is of size n which basically represents that for particular index i that the ball is dropped in the ith column where will in which column will that ball land after it has traveled all the cells and in case that ball is not able to reach the bottom then we have to simply put minus one in that index so let's see this example so here we are given a 2d grid and each cell of this grid has either integer one or integer minus one so what does these both of integers represent is in case this is one then the orientation of the board that will be in the cell will be like this and in case it is minus one then the orientation will be in this form so if we try to fill this out it will be something like this so i am just filling it for first row and similarly we will be doing this for all the cells so i have done this here so let me just clear this out and let's just enlarge this since you have to work on this yes so the question tries to say that after we have just placed all the cardboards in their orientations that is required then we will be required to drop the ball from each column so we have the total number of balls equal to the total number of columns in this grid so once we try to drop this ball so this ball will travel from this path and it will eventually come out from this column and if we try to just throw this ball it won't be able to reach the last row because it in this case the root is totally closed and similar will be the case for this ball this ball and this ball so what we are required to do is we are just required to return the array which contains like for this ball where this will ball come out from so this ball will come out from basically this index which is 0 and 1 so it will be 1 and for this ball from where will it come out it won't be able to reach the last row hence it will be minus 1 and since the result is similar for all the other three balls since they won't be able to reach the last row hence all the indices will be minus one so this is the array that we will be returning so this clearly states that the first ball which is the ith ball will come out from the first row and these all balls won't be able to come out so let's see how can we do this so if we clearly observe all the patterns we are given with like this pattern and this pattern this one 
and this one. So out of these four, we need to figure out again which case the ball might travel. So if we throw a ball in this pattern, so it will be automatically blocked. But in this case, if we throw ball in this pattern, so it can travel. Similar is the case with this one. And if we throw here, so it might travel to left side or to the right side. So the only case where this ball is not able to travel is this case. And in the other three cases, it is able to travel. So what we shall be doing is we will be iterating over all the columns. And why we will be doing so? It will be because we have to drop ball from every column and then see the result. So that is the reason we will be iterating over all the columns. And then for each column, what we will do is we will simply keep two variables like X and Y, which represents uh, X represents the rows and Y represents the columns. So we will be initializing this X and Y with initially where the ball is starting its journey from. And then eventually we will be checking out like if this pattern is this one. So yes, obviously it can travel. So we will be increasing our X and Y to X plus plus and Y plus plus because it is traveling to in this direction. And the other case might be, for example, in this case, if the ball is here and the pattern is of this type. So obviously the ball will travel to the row next, but the column is previous one. So it will be X plus plus and Y minus minus. So this is what we will be doing. And in case we will be checking that in case the pattern is something like this. So this ball won't be able to travel to any of the next cells. So we will simply break out of our loop and simply return that in this case, it is not possible to reach the end row. So now let's see how can we code this problem. So let me just change this name to A. And then we will be declaring an uh, integer N which is basically the length of this array a, basically the number of rows and m is equal to a of zero dot length which is the total number of columns and then we will be creating an array that we have to return and which is of the size m which is the number of columns and then we will be filling this array with minus one. So now what we will do is we'll simply apply for loop from i is equal to zero to i is less than m and then we will just increment it. So we have applied for loop for each column which represents the total number of balls that we will be throwing and the answer for each ball and the reason why we have filled this array initially to minus one is that we are presuming that for every ball they won't be able to reach the end and then after iterating over all of them we'll find out out of all of them how many are able to reach the end so here we will create two variables x and y so x will be 0 and y will be i so basically this is the initial where they will start the journey from so for example for this ball x will be 0th row and the column will be this column which is basically 0 and in this case if the ball starts the journey from here so x will be 0 and the y will be basically m minus 1. So after having initialized them, so we will apply while loop. And in this while loop, we'll apply a condition in case this x is greater than equal to n. 
So what does this condition mean? That in this case, if we have reached the end, so in this case, after having reached end, so when we come out, the x will be equal to n or it might be greater than n as well. So this is the condition that we have to stop. And in other case, what we will do is that simply if y plus 1 is less than m and a of x of y is equal to 1 and a of x of y plus 1 is equal to 1. So what does this mean? That in case that the condition is basically the pattern is of something like this type which is here. This is 1 and 1. So in this case we are able to travel and the next cell that we will be traveling is we will reach here. So that is what we will be doing. We will simply increment x to plus 1 and y also. Mm, let me just. Yes. So y plus plus. Or other case will be if y minus 1 is greater than equal to 0 and a of x of y is equal to minus 1 and a of x of y minus 1 is equal to minus 1 and in this case what we will do is we will simply increase the row and decrease the column and in the else case we will simply break out of this loop. So for this condition else if condition what does it mean to say is that in case this ball is just here and if it needs to travel from here then it is minus 1 and minus 1. So yes it can travel here. So that is what this else if condition is trying to say. And in the else case it is the else case is of this type. So in this case it won't be able to travel. So we have simply break out of this loop and what we will do is after we are done with all the conditions we are just left with just one condition which is if x is equal to greater than equal to n that is we have reached our end row so we will simply see if y is greater than equal to 0 and y is less than m so we'll do something in this case or something else in this case. So what does this condition mean is that in case for example let's hypothetically consider that ball was here. So after reaching here so this ball will come out from here but this column if we see it is minus 1. So this is not possible. So and in the other case what it might be that the ball is just traveling from here and then it will come out from this side like if this board was something like this so this was uh, the channel that the ball was traveling through so if this was the channel then it will come out from here so which is basically greater than the length of this uh, column so this is not possible so in this case also we won't be able to store our answer in the answer array that we have to return. So that is the reason we have applied this condition. So in this case we will simply write array of i is equal to y. So what does this mean is basically if we just drop the ball from ith column it lands in the yth column. So in the else we need to break so I'll be just breaking it here and let's try to run this code so it is giving this okay compilation error so it is missing the return statement 
yes we have to return the array basically this is our answer array so it is getting accepted now let's try to submit this problem so yes this problem is getting accepted so i hope you understood solution in this video and if you appreciate my work you can consider subscribing to this channel and giving thumbs up to this video so let's meet in the next video till then bye bye